name is Alexandra Payne and I'm a ninth grader attending Manhattan Village Academy. And I think my school is very unique. We're a small school located on 23rd Street. We have a lot of activities and clubs here. I'm in involved in band, which I play the clarinet in. And my friends right here, they're all in band. So, and we also have a lot of clubs. I'm also in drama club. And today is Thursday, so we have service learning in, in a couple of minutes. And what we do for service learning is we go to different places and we volunteer. It's also to help us for our college application, so. My name is Emmy Canto. So I was thinking about doing law, like becoming a lawyer. Yeah, I'm interested in that. But then again, like, I would like to be like a counselor or like psychologist. Yeah. Oh, I live there. Um, and where are you I'm from? from uh, Holland. You live Queens. there? Yeah, in Berlin. Berlin. Yeah, and it's then we moved to Stuttgart. It's six Stuttgart? Yeah. I live in close Düsseldorf. Düsseldorf. All signs. All right, so we know sign equals sign is law of cosines. Side, side, side. Law of cosines. What do we, when do we use the law of sines? What angle, side configuration? Sorry, raise your hand. Shh, Chris. SSA actually, or ASS. Um, that is what we did on two, uh, yesterday, remember? Where we found the other angle and it was one of two choices. So yes, but that, that's the ambiguous case. So when do we use law of sines for sure? Yes. Two angles in the side, which could look at, uh, like AAS or ASA. And those are essentially the same, right? So if I know two angles and one side, cosines, find the angle. Let's pretend you don't have to write this down in your sheet, okay? <laughs> Let's say we found this angle. Now can I find the area? Yeah. But you need to decide which two sides My name is Sarah Lewis, and I teach ninth grade algebra. Um, all the teachers that teach the ninth grade, we meet every Thursday for about two hours and discuss um, students, we discuss what we're teaching, we discuss um, upcoming assessments, um, we discuss teaching strategies for specific uh, lessons, we showcase student work, um, it's very productive, but there's so much to talk about that it's also structured, thank God. The classes approach um, the topics in different ways, so um, from you know a lecture to hands-on to making a project to them presenting work and exploring it, um, just lots of different ways to talk about math, and so it gives the students some way to latch on and, and understand it and therefore um, be successful.
Yeah. I haven't seen a couple of days. What have you been? Really? Sometimes uh, uh -huh. kicking, sometimes training, so, right? And I had to call them once. Uh -huh. And here is Rosa Roja. Hello. 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 Rose. Morning. Yeah. Good morning. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael. Come on. Say hi. My name is Joe Frick and I teach ESL and literacy. We were doing like a vocabulary skills um, lesson for um, because the students will have Regents exams uh, coming up in June and it's important for especially students who lower skilled or struggle with literacy or are ESL students that they have to learn a lot of science concepts and vocabulary but then in terms of the way that they read questions like they have to be able to look out for words that are just normal English words that maybe they know in one way but when they're used on a test means something uh, different. Yeah, if it was an us sound, then it's B-U-A. Like, B-U-A. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Take two more minutes. I don't want to hear some uh, other words you found. Probability. <laughs> Why would that be uh, confusing, maybe? Because um, you might see prevailing as a to stop uh -huh. something would from happening. Mind? To stop something from happening? Yeah. Like preventing, almost? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I like that. It's a good culture like that with the, the teachers and the, the students. I mean, I think everybody's very appreciative to be here. My name is Stephanie Daler, and I'm the admissions director for MBA. The school is divided into clusters, and every grade has their own cluster. That involves a common area as well as classrooms surrounding uh, with each of the various subjects. This is a typical cluster. They're all essentially mirror images of one another, and the ninth and 10th grade are on one floor, the 11th and 12th grade are above. Something that's nice about the clusters being divided is that all of the students in the same grade have an area to congregate just within their own grade level. That's where we would also have assemblies. We have tons of student work in every cluster. You'll see it all over, and it's very frequently rotated. Media Center. This is the circulation desk, so this is where students will come up and I'll check out books to them. Um, students come in here out of personal interest or to do research for their uh, assignments. Um, hi, welcome. Uh, generally, if they're coming in from a class, they have to give me a pass to let them know, to let me know that they're not skipping out of class. And otherwise, during their lunch break, they're welcome to come after school and before school. Lots of students come in here to print uh, if they don't have printers at home. Here's the college and career section, for example. Get yourself into college. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, some things looking a little bit more in advance to try to do some backwards planning. Lots of our students are actually very ambitious and have uh, career goals. And then it's more about informing yourself what steps need to be taken in order to end up in that career. Uh, so we do have resources in print here. Also online, we have access to databases that help students with their college planning. Um, this is where our fiction section is, and we also offer some comfortable chairs. Students can work independently uh, here on these chairs. And we just got these new uh, Macintosh computers, which have been very popular with the students. Uh, but we also do have wireless access. We have our nonfiction section, poetry, short story collections. One of the things that is, a, is, is very common in the New York City public schools is that students will reach for 65 and say, well, I passed. But we found that that's not enough. You say to students, no, 65 is not enough. 
you want to go to a great college, you want to go to a great university, you have to get 95 because underlying our entire philosophy is when high school is difficult, college will be easy. One thing that's really special about this school, I think, is the personal attention that our kids receive. And that it's a really uh, low teacher to student ratio. So I think that's, that's relatively rare. And I think beyond that, we have just such an exceptional staff of teachers that really go above and beyond to help the students succeed. Hi, my name's Jeremy. I'm in 11th grade, I go to attend Manhattan Village Academy. I think the school is really great. The teachers are awesome. They help you out with whatever you need. It, choose Manhattan Village Academy. It's one of the best schools ever. My name is Martin Kelly. I teach music. I teach ninth grade during the day. And after school, I am the band director. It, it helps the relay of uh, transmitting ideas and energy from one part of the brain to the other. All of the students in the after, school, uh, the after school music program, they all do very well in the academics as well. Oh, I love it. Yes, I'm here every day. I want to show the world how high I can fly as I write your name across the sky I can touch the stars stand on the moon I'm on a heavenly cloud that I share with you I want to show the world everything that you are brings me to you like a song in my heart Always in tune with all my emotion. I share my devotion. I'd cross the ocean to be with you. This is my pledge, my promise to honor and cherish through and through. And with this ring, always and for. Show